Hi, I'm Parker, and I'm delighted to be discussing Clipper, our algorithm for robust data association. So a data association is the process of identifying the same object across multiple views, and it's a fundamental challenge and component in robotic perception pipelines. So it's well known in the community that uh, incorrect data association can wreak havoc to the downstream estimation task. Shown here are a few examples that use data association in their pipelines. Um, and uh, take, for example, RGBD reconstruction. The goal here is to take multiple images, extract features in each of those images, and then match those features across images. Once those features are matched, we can use that information to stitch together uh, these different RGBD frames and end up with some, uh, with some reconstruction as shown here in the bottom left. And uh, you know, even with a few incorrect data associations, can, we can really end up with the totally wrong solution as shown here on the top row uh, in some of these applications. So the goal of this talk is to talk about how to efficiently reject spurious data associations. And we'll, for simplicity, you know, we'll, we'll focus on point clouds here. So shown in the upper right hand corner is our two point clouds, red and blue. And uh, the challenge here is to, is to find these correct green associations amongst all of these incorrect magenta associations. And it's difficult because there are outliers, there are noise on the inliers, and there's partial uh, view of the data. So the key idea that we'll leverage then is that internal geometry um, or pairwise geometry between points inside of a single point cloud uh, doesn't change under rigid body transformation. So this idea is um, um, relatively simple and has been used in lots of different works uh, and shown here are, are a list of the most relevant to this work. I've, I've you know, separated them into unweighted and unweighted categories uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the, uh, in the next few slides. But for now, the important thing is that all these works, you know, they leverage this idea to build up some sort of graph where each edge in this graph encodes um, what we call association consistency. Right, so let's dig into that a little bit more. Um, if, we, if we're given these two point clouds, red and orange, and also a set of initial potential associations shown here in the middle, we can build this consistency graph. And what we do is we take each pair of associations and we score their consistency together. Right, so if we take U1 and U3, um, that means that we take the distance between these two points, and that's D, and also the distance over here, D prime. And if those distances are the same, then we say that these, cons these associations are 100% consistent. And the way we scored is through this function F, um, whose, whose uh, uh, range is between zero and one. And you can use you know, uh, any sort of function you like. Um, and in this case, we use a, a Gaussian kernel to, to give us that score. Right, so we do this for each pair of associations. We build up this graph, which now looks like this, and it becomes a little bit more clear that to pick the consistent associations, the largest set of consistent associations, um, we can use the maximum click. Uh, we can find the maximum click in the graph. So the max maximum click problem is well known, well understood, um, and it's an NP-hard problem. And uh, we'll, leverage, we'll leverage these ideas of maximum click here to find this large set of self-consistent associations. Okay, so I showed you the case of uh, perfect data. Um, now with noise, uh, in this case, we see that you know a few of these orange points moved a little bit. Some of the associations now you know don't yield 100% consistency, and our graph looks like this, where the edges are are shaded different color, uh, shaded uh, differently based on their consistency. And you'll notice that we added two edges also. So there's now an edge between U1 and U2 and U1 and U4. So uh, previously I talked about weighted versus unweighted. And if we look at what the unweighted class of, of uh, works do is they take this graph and they threshold it uh, to a binary or, or unweighted graph. And this leads to loss of information. And kind of this shows a, 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 an example here on the bottom of the screen. Um, showing the challenge of losing this information because now there are these two competing clicks and it's not clear which click to choose. Um, of course, the click on the right corresponds to the actual uh, inliers, but it's, but it's impossible to know just from looking at the clicks. On the other side of things, um, there are algorithms in the weighted category. And what these algorithms tend to do is to formulate a dense subgraph problem. So uh, density of a, of a subgraph is shown, the expression for it is shown here in the bottom left. It's the sum of the edge weights over the number of vertices in the subgraph. And the problem here is that it violates the click constraint. 
a subgraph need not be a click. And in fact, you know, the algorithm may choose to add an arbitrary edge um, here in the consistency graph because it increases the density metric, uh, but this yields, you know, choosing incorrect associations. Right, so then our question is, how do we leverage edge weights while still maintaining this click constraint? And here's a mathematical formulation of that statement. Um, the objective here is over the, uh, this, this Rayleigh quotient-like objective is, is over the binary domain um, and is, that encodes the density of the subgraph. And it's subject to this click constraint um, uh, here. And so in English, this is to select the densest click of consistent associations. And as we've talked about, you know, this, this being over the binary domain uh, is an MP hard problem. And so what we do is we relax it using some continuous relaxation. And before we talk, you know, too much into the details there, uh, the observations I would like to point out is that this relaxation was inspired by a 2017 work by Belichu and Gillis, where they took the maximum click problem for unweighted graphs and they uh, use this. Um, they use this sort of relaxation, and they found that uh, using this relaxation, it can con the solutions converge to uh, binary vectors, um, just as in the original problem statement. Also, you know, a very interesting and important property that they found and they were able to show was that local solutions of this relaxation correspond to maximal clicks of the original problem. So we have this nice relaxation that's for unweighted graphs. It has some very nice properties relating to the solutions and correspondences between the relaxed and original versions. And what we did is we took this relaxation uh, and we extended it to the weighted case so that we could apply it to our dense click problem. And we were still able to show, and we're still able to show that you know local solutions of this relaxation somehow correspond to uh, uh, the original problem. And what we do then is, you know, if we look at this relaxation a little bit more, the objective here has this U transpose MDU where MD is encoding that click constraint from the uh, adjacency or affinity matrix M. So for edges that are not uh, to be chosen, we, we impose this, this, this penalty here, negative D, where D is a positive scalar. And what we do is we solve this in a homotopy fashion. So this is like a graduated penalty. And over time, as we solve this problem, um, we keep increasing the, the size of D uh, to penalize these uh, incorrect edges more. So this is a non-convex problem. You can solve it with your favorite solver, of course. Uh, we implemented a projected gradient ascent um, algorithm because of its, its speed. Uh, we found that, it, we found that it's, it's uh, very accurate and also scalable. So how well does this formulation and the relaxation thereof perform? Um, here are some results of Clipper. And uh, the, the scenario here is we use the Stanford bunny um, and we vary the outlier ratio of the 1000 initial associations shown here on the x-axis. And we're going to report the precision and recall, um, where of course precision and recall of one is, is the very best. So we see that Clipper runs in about 100 milliseconds and is able to achieve 100% precision up until 90%, uh, up until about 90% uh, outlier regime. So recall that kind of the two points that we were trying to balance uh, before a few slides ago was, was this loss of information and the violation of the click constraint, right? So I'm going to uncover now the unweighted uh, algorithms here. And these, these algorithms in this unweighted category solve the, uh, the unweighted maximum click problem. Belichu is essentially um, a, a binary version of Clipper. Uh, PMC, or parallel maximum click, both exact and heuristic, are used in the state-of-the-art uh, teaser point cloud registration algorithm and, uh, and is able to use up to 24 cores to solve uh, maximum click. And we, we see already that uh, um, the weighted formulation is able to maintain higher precision for, uh, uh, for longer. While the binary, you know, by thresholding this information, we lose some information and the performance starts degrading around 60% uh, outlier regime. Okay, so uh, the next point is showing how the, these weighted algorithms violate the click constraint. And show, we are using here Liordano as a representative of this class. Um, and this Liordano uh, algorithm uses, uh, uses some spectral relaxations um, and effectively throws away the, you know, the click constraint. And we see that it really starts to struggle uh, rather quickly 
and these higher um, higher uh, outlier regime uh, cases. So Clipper is able to uh, maintain high precision um, over the competing algorithms by maintaining information and by also maintaining this click constraint. Some other results uh, that I won't go, really go over here, um, see, see the paper for more details, uh, but we talk about how Clipper is more scalable compared to these other algorithms, especially those that are actually trying to solve the exact uh, maximum click algorithm, which of course is, is MP hard and will be intractable as problem size increases. We also talk about how this uh, idea is, is generalizable, right? It, it doesn't need to be point clouds. Uh, this is a data, this is a pairwise data association algorithm. So as long as you're able to find some invariant um, for the transform of interest, you can apply these techniques. So I'll end with showing some uh, results on real data. Uh, here is uh, two camera views from two robots. Both have an, a D435i uh, RealSense RGBD camera. And I think what's, what's particularly interesting here is that uh, if you look in the literature, many of the RGBD reconstruction works, um, what they'll do is they'll take, they'll take uh, uh, an integration of maybe 30 to 50 RGBD frames to really to build these uh, more dense point clouds. Um, since these sensors, you know, a single frame of these sensors gives a relatively sparse point cloud as shown here to the right. Um, by integrating them up, uh, you're able to get better fidelity of 3D features than these pipe, these, you know, traditional pipelines can then use ransack to reject outliers and then finally perform some least squares uh, fitting to find the registration. So what we do is we take these raw point clouds, um, we generate 1000 initial correspondences between them. And then by applying Clipper, um, we select, uh, in this case, we selected eight correspondences in about 100 milliseconds. And uh, this, these correspondences then allow us to correctly register uh, these two frames from two robots. Okay, so in summary, uh, what we've talked about here is the importance of, of leveraging continuous weights um, as opposed to just thresholding. So uh, the problem formulation here really matters. Um, and that's finding these dense clicks uh, in the, the consistency graph. We also talked about the uh, continuous relaxation. Um, again, you know, we talked about the importance of clicks. We showed uh, results from our projected gradient descent approach that yields fast scalable solutions. We talked about how this can be applied on, on real data and we showed that um, and also just had a, a, a small discussion about how this is applicable to a variety of data association problems. So finally, I'll just point out that uh, Clipper, all this code is available online on GitHub. Uh, we encourage you, if you're interested, to go clone it, give it a try. Uh, it's in C++. There are Python and MATLAB bindings for uh, ease of use. And we would be very interested to hear your thoughts and, uh, and hear how you apply it to your data. With that, thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions.